Hello there, I'm Nutrix, and today we're looking into another synthesizer, software synthesizer, from Cherry Audio. If you don't know Cherry Audio, you should. Uh, there's probably a link at the bottom, or just look at my channel. There's a lot of videos about Cherry Audio. They do great software synthesizers. Um, a lot of them are a recreation of classic synthesizers. Some of them are just weird stuff that they create from scratch. This one we have to talk today is a recreation or emulation of a classic, a vintage, weird synthesizer. But again, they added so much to it that in my book, they're more into the inspiration from the original, and then they just add up to it to make it more modern and interesting. Now, this one is called Atomica, and it's actually a emulation of the Soviet synthesizer, the Polyvox synthesizer, made in 1982 to 1990. When you looked at it, it felt like another analog synthesizer of the time, but they did not have access to the same technology as you had in the US or even in Japan at the time. So instead of using the same technology that you would see in you know, US synthesizer at the time, you had to be creative. There's a completely different way of using, in this case, op amp to create the filter. It works, makes a low pass, bend pass, high pass if you need to, but it has a different tone to it. That what's make the Polywox sound different than the others. And the fact that it was a duotone synthesizer where basically you would play two notes and the two notes would control the pitch of the two oscillators separately, supposedly was not so stable or not perfect in the way it worked. So instead, in this case, they have a fully polyphonic synthesizer in it. You can go up to 16 voices. So this is not the original. This is what the Atomica is offering. As I'm saying, the Atomica is offering the original design, I would say, with the tonality that the original had, plus the stability of the new stuff. It's a you know, it's a computer make running it, but also with a stable duophonic and up to 16 polyphonic notes on this. Plus there's some new controls. The fact that the filter is made in a different way with an op amp, they decided to add control over the op amp. So we have a starve and a drive built in into the filter that has a different sound than most other filter that you hear. So we'll just, in this case, you know, if you say, well, another synthesizer, yes, but just because the filter is totally different than what we're used to from analog American synthesizer or even Japanese synthesizer, it makes this one sounds, you know, stand out because of that different sound. And they added an entire section for arpeggiator and effects, delay, reverb, uh, chorus, flanger, all that stuff that, of course, in the original was not there. Well, let's just dive right into it. And I made a bunch of sounds, so we'll listen to the sound I made. They're made mostly to present you what is different in this synthesizer. You have always the focus option to go closer. And if you look at uh, the main section, you've got oscillator one and oscillator two, and you can control the pitch of each of them and the, the shape of it. You see there's a square and then you can go more and more into a pulse sound. Now, by doing so, I'm gonna bring the volume down here. By doing so, of course, you're changing the sound of it, changing the pitch of it. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we're expecting. You have modulation. Basically, you can have the pitch being controlled by the filter, uh, by an LFO. The LFO is right here, the modulator. What's interesting right away in the oscillator one and two uh, combination is the control over the FM wave. So when you bring that up, you actually use the oscillator two to FM modulate, so frequency modulate the oscillator one. So by just going like this,
can do this really cool thing about having the filter, uh, having the frequency that's modula modulating the uh, first one, so the second one being lower in pitch than the original one, it creates that. And then you can also change the shape of each of them. You can also change, create these really aggressive tone, really rapidly. That's just combining the two. I'm not even listening to the second one. If you bring the second one up, that's this one. That's, and then if you did tune this a little bit, it just sounds really massive right away, just with this. So really interesting right away with the oscillator in here. You have your two oscillators you can combine into the mixer. There's a noise also you can bring in. So all stuff that you expect. Um, you have right away here the filter section. Attack, decay, sustain, release. What do we expect? The cutoff frequency, the resonance, the keyboard tracking. So if you want the cutoff to track the key, so as you go up the keys, you want it to open up. When you go down the keys, you want it to close. And you want to use the envelope or the... It's the LFO I'm guessing here. Let's move this here. Like this, this. And we need to have, if you want this to follow, you need to have the EG, so envelope generator depth. When you put it into the other mode here, it becomes an, a looped envelope. So you have either a single shot envelope or a loop envelope. You can actually, let's have two sawtooth playing, an octave difference. Okay. And you like this, you're just closing it. Now it's a low pass filter. If I bring the resonance up, it's. It has some attitude. I like that sound. Now, what happens with the filter drive? What what we expect? I'm gonna assign it to this. So hear that movement still have a round base at the bottom here now if we take this and we bring the star up see now it changes Let's bring that up a little bit Now, if we have a lower drive, so if you have a lot of starve, but a very low drive and a lot of resonance, you have that kind of very aggressive a tone that makes me think of the sound of the MS-20. Kind of sizzling. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, so that's it. And this is, again, because I'm And also the bend pass. And the eye pass.
really easy to create aggressive tones either from the FM synthesis or from the filter that has the starve and the drive is just like, it goes with that. Now you have the amplifier, simple attack key, sustain release, what we expect, we're gonna amplifier drive, a different mode again, same mode, single or looped modulation. So LFO and velocity, so we can change the volume with velocity, everything that we expect. On the other side, you have voice assign, the glide, you want it to So you decide how much you want it to glide. And then you've got unison. And how much other voices you want to be playing in unison and how much you want them to detune. So this works into mono or duo, even four, eight, Massive sounds. And if you don't have the unison, then you. You have a polyphonic synthesizer. The next section you have the arpeggiator here. Simple, up, down, up and down, random, and the range. Phaser is actually pretty cool. Flanger, chorus. You see the mini chorus, this one doesn't work anymore. Resonance is gone and the flanger resonance is back. Just gonna teach you what this is the difference between chorus and flanging. Echo, you have a digital echo, we got a tape echo and you got a ping pong echo. Yeah, bring it back up. Tape. And tape, you have the modulation rate so you can have it slow down and stuff like that. So really cool. And the reverb, you know, a lot of spring plate room all in the galactic, which is a huge. Very long decay on this one. FX modulator, you have the amount here you can use. So you also have another LFO here, the waveform and the sync, and how it's gonna be affected by the mod wheel or the key reset. So every time you press a key, the LFO is restarted from zero. So it's gonna always gonna be starting at the same place. So it becomes kind of a, um, a short envelope if you want. And that's it. Atomica is really interesting in the fact that it doesn't sound like what we're used to in a lot of analog synthesizer has this um, sound to the filter. And that's what we're interested in when we look at different synthesizers that the filter sounds different. So this one has, a, has an attitude by itself, plus the fact that you have the starve and the drive that you don't usually have on this as a hardware synthesizer. And it's a control that gives you a tone that you don't hear often in synthesizers. I would say to Cherry Odoo, I love what you did to this, but I can't help myself in saying, I wish I had an advanced mode to tweak inside interconnection. What I mean by that is if you had an advanced mode and I would be able to assign like a matrix and say, well, my modulator, I wanted to control the amount of oscillator 2 FM. I know it, we're going away from the original synthesizer, but why not? You know, the fact that we have starve and filter, why not have an advanced 
matrix of modulation and say modulator sends to a sort of FM or the amount of noise. So noise can come in and, and leave. And why not say, well, the FM for the modulator for, well, the modulator and the effects modulator could also be there and you can be controlled in different places. But that's just me. I love to have more control about modulation. And every time I turn a knob and I find I like that sound, I'm wishing I could control this. Of course, you could assign this, you can record a controller to this and assign a MIDI message to control the oscillator 2 FM mode here. That is what I'll have to do if I want to control it. But part of the synthesis, it'd be nice to have advanced internal matrix of modulation, but that's just me. <laughs> that's it. It's a cool thing. It sounds really nice. And again, Cherry Audio, good work. You're doing, you know, very cool sounding synthesizers. Keep it up. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. Cheers. We'll